With Russia losing so much equipment in Ukraine, they've been trying to get more wherever they can, whether that's artillery shells from North Korea, drones from Iran, or tanks from Belarus. And Belarus might be the most interesting, given its borders with Ukraine and Russia invading from there. Here, recently, we saw a train carrying tanks to Russia. These are real old T-72s, and Belarus has several hundred of them, mostly at their 969th tank storage base south of Minsk, which we'll take a closer look at later. But based on other videos and documents, these tanks appear to have headed to Russia to Kamensk, which is right on the border of Ukraine, likely to the 70th 24th base that I've talked about earlier, which is a major hub for sending tanks and other vehicles to fight into Ukraine. So that brings up, just how useful will these and other equipment that Belarus sends to Russia be for Russia and Ukraine? And if Belarus were to enter the war, would it even make a difference? After all, they still have a large Soviet force left over from the Cold War, which still has twice the number of tanks as Germany. So could they make another attempt on Kyiv? A lot of it will come down to how well their equipment has been taken care of. Which brings up our sponsor. Take care of your skin with Tiege Hanley, made specifically for men. They have helped me start and maintain my skincare routine by making the entire process uncomplicated. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I'd recommend you start with their level 1 system, which comes with all the basics. A daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin, a 2 times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of dead skin cells, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun, and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. But my favorite part about Tiege Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you what to do with each product, because otherwise I'm completely clueless. They make the process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin easy. Their products have made my skin look good and feel better than ever, but you don't have to just take my word for it. They have over 5,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers from around the world. And because Tiege Hanley is sponsoring this video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click on the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box, plus a free gift. So don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and get started today. Belarus has been important for a long time. During the Cold War, it served as the Western Front for the Soviet Union. It was an important buffer for Moscow in the event that the Warsaw Pact collapsed. From then until today, it really still serves a similar role. In fact, their military is mainly broken down into two commands, Western and Northwestern, which really gives a pretty clear idea of where it sees a potential threat coming from. And Belarus is Russia's closest ally in Europe. They even let Russian forces invade Ukraine from their territory. Despite that, they've refrained from entering the war themselves. There's been plenty of talk about them joining, so I thought it would be interesting to take a look and see what they could achieve, or even just what they have that they could provide to Russia, all using the latest satellite imagery. Unfortunately, this time of the year, it's really cloudy, and it makes it really hard to get clear satellite imagery. I've been checking every day, day after day, for weeks now for clear days, and here's what I came up with. First, a bit about their military, specifically their tanks. Belarus has one main tank storage base, the 969th. The most recent satellite imagery shows 85 visible tanks. Almost exactly a year earlier, it was 150. And in June 2019, roughly 320 were visible. The problem is that that base has been going through a lot of upgrades over the recent years. Since 2017, they've built 21 new garages and shelters. Roughly 14 of those have been for the armored fighting vehicle section, and then maybe half of those of which are for tanks, with each one potentially sheltering 20 tanks. Six of those were built just in the last year, so the 120 tank capacity could easily account for the 65 less tanks that we see now from a year ago. But along with the original garages, it could be assumed that there is likely 300 to 400 tanks here. Just how many of those are operational is harder to know, but a lot of their tanks are real old as we saw in this video, many of them being variants of the original T-72 designed 50 years ago. Belarus, though, also has many upgraded T-72Bs, which are also pretty old. On top of these, they have been upgraded to a few of the newer variants, as well as a few dozen T-80s. The military of Belarus has been shrinking rapidly in recent years. In 2011, their ground forces consisted of roughly 30,000 personnel. In 2021, it's down to 10,000. They also shrank from six mechanized brigades to four. Those four are the 6th, 11th, 19th, and 120th. Each one of those brigades has one tank battalion of roughly 60 tanks, so that would imply 240 active tanks. So their army is way too small really to make a major difference if they were to join Russia in the war in Ukraine. It alone would be highly unlikely to be able to push in and take Kyiv, especially since their entire ground forces is smaller than the Russian units that advanced on Kyiv back in February. But trying to predict what will happen in this war has shown to be an impossibility. Belarus, along with Russian units, could potentially build up a strong enough force, and sure enough, Russia has been sending a few thousand troops there, but Russia is already having manpower issues elsewhere. So again, there's nowhere near enough to make an attempt on Kyiv. 
They could keep building up along the border threatening an attack in an attempt to force Ukraine to move troops from other regions to the area, but again, it wouldn't be much of a credible threat due to its size. The army of Belarus is just too small. Mobilizing, calling up reserves, paramilitary, etc. It would all help, but without extensive training and equipping, supporting them all, it would be of little help. Really, the greatest value of Belarus to Russia is keeping some form of pressure on Ukraine so that it has to keep forces along the border. Another option, which might be a long shot, is Belarus attacking down into the northwestern part of Ukraine. Again, they don't have the numbers to take Kyiv, but further west is less heavily defended than Kyiv and eastern Ukraine, and there's also not as many large cities. It's also valuable as it could cut supply lines of NATO equipment being sent into Ukraine. The E-373 highway and the rail line along it, which is one of the routes believed to be used, is only 70 kilometers from the border of Belarus. And then another H-22 is only another 40 kilometers. And we've seen a lot of military exercises in Brest, military vehicles arriving at Solon via rail, and in Pinsk as well. But again, that would be incredibly risky. And those supply lines could just be moved further south through Leaf, where likely already much of it flows through anyway. Also, Belarus could be useful as an airbase to launch strikes from. British intelligence recently released an image of an airbase near Minsk showing MiG-31s with potential Kinzel air-launched ballistic slash hypersonic missiles. I bought my own satellite imagery here, and sure enough, there are three MiG-31s, and then here, what appears to be three missile canisters. Kinzel is roughly 7.75 meters long. It's a little hard to tell here, but these concrete pads are 2 by 6 meters each, which means this canister is roughly a little over 8 meters in length, which is huge. There aren't many other missiles or other equipment that is that big, so there is a good chance that it is Kinzel. Another, Luanetsk Air Base, just 50 kilometers from the border, is another interesting one. As you can see here, there's been a lot of work being done to build up the base. It was kind of hard to tell, so I bought some high resolution satellite imagery of the area. In the image from October 31st, we see new buildings, what appears to be tents for personnel that's sectioned off, a lot of more unfinished construction, and a few radars and vehicles set up in the eastern part of the base. And there have been some reports by Ukraine that Russia has been launching those Iranian drones from Belarus. So far there's been no confirmation, but they also recently pointed out this airbase. These drone sites are incredibly difficult to identify as they really don't require too much readily identifiable equipment. Also, the drones can just be launched from the back of a truck. Another value of Belarus to Russia is sending ammunition. It's been reported that they've sent over 65,000 tons worth since the start of the war. On top of sending ammunition is equipment, like these tanks. It's reported that they have now, or they're going to be sending Russia about 100 tanks total. So then the question becomes, just how many can they supply to Russia? With the 240 active tanks, plus 300 to 400 in storage, that puts their total around 600. And Russia has already lost more than twice that number in Ukraine. And, realistically, they can't just hand over all their active tanks, as they're going to need them to be guarding NATO on their northern and western border. Also, all the stored tanks are not combat ready or able to be made combat ready anytime soon. But even if they could send 200 or 300 tanks, at the rate at which Russia has been losing tanks in Ukraine, that wouldn't even be enough for two months. So, pulling all their vehicles and equipment, along with all their active army, conscripts, etc., it honestly wouldn't make that much of a major difference. And also, again, don't forget to check out Tiege Hanley. The link is down in the description.